In the previous video tutorial, I showed you how to create uh, a arc available um, storage cluster with the three nodes in less than 10 minutes. Now we'll see how we can actually use this cluster to store data and download the data. First of all, we have to run sx init and pass to it the IP address of any of the nodes uh, of the cluster. So let's give it 57 and the name of the cluster, which you might recall is test, because I am a really creative person. So we are showed the fingerprint of the SSL certificate used by the cluster. We have to verify that it matches the one that uh, is really being used by the cluster, and then accept it. Then we have to enter the user key which, like always, we can find in the output of SX server status. And it's done. Now we can list the volumes on the cluster, and we can start referring to the cluster by just using the test name. The cluster is empty, so let's create a volume in it. We we'll set the owner the, with the dash o to admin, which is the uh, default user created uh, during the installation of the cluster. And we'll set the replica count to 1, because we are going to put not important data in this volume, and if we even one node of the cluster dies, we don't care if we lose the data. The volume was created, so we can start uploading. Well, actually, we will generate some random data now. And we'll upload it to the cluster. Let's see if the upload was successful. There it is. You can use the dash L option to have a more verbose output. So you can see that the file is actually 10 kilobytes, about 10 kilobytes. Uh, now, let's create a volume with a replica theory. We'll call it very important volume. Here we can put some more interesting data that we don't want absolutely to lose. If uh, even two nodes of the cluster die, we will still be able to download this data. Let's try that. Let's stop two of the nodes. Right now only one node is running, but we can still list the volume and download the data. As you can see, the MD5 of the file is the same as the one that we uploaded. So let's try see what happens when instead we try to list the replica one volume. Here is another way to download the file is by using SXCAD. So we can pipe the output, uh, the content of the file directly into MD5. As you can see, this time the download failed because the volume has, uh, was set to replica one. So uh, the file basically has been split in three equal parts and it has been stored. Uh, it, one of these parts has been stored on each node. So even if one node goes down, the download will be impossible to com be completed. Let's restart the nodes now.
and let's see how the duplication works. So when we, if we decide to upload uh, one of the files to the that we already uploaded to the replica three volume to the replica one volume, you will see. Let's use the dash v option so that we can have some more verbose output. You will see that uh, no actual transfer takes place. As you can see, the uh, actual uploaded data was uh, zero because the file was already there. So it has been completely uh, deduplicated. Uh, it takes, it doesn't take any additional space on the storage nodes and it didn't take even any, uh, uh, almost any bandwidth to be uploaded because it was already in the cluster and the client is uh, smart enough to know if uh, the file is already there. But let's do something even a bit uh, better, cooler. Let's try to append some data to our file. Here I'm, I'm appending uh, 10,000 bytes to the run file and I will try to upload the same file again. Round after append. As you can see, the file has a total of uh, five blocks, uh, but only three of them were actually transferred because uh, only the part that uh, has been uh, appended has been transferred. The rest was already in the cluster. So we saved uh, some traffic and also we are saying uh, some uh, storage space on the cluster side. Data deduplication uh, is uh, shared among all users of the cluster and all volumes. So let's try now to add a second user. The tool that we need to use is SXACL. It has a very simple syntax, just a user add the privilege level that you want to give to the user, in this case normal, and the username. We call it nervous. And the cluster name. This is the access key uh, of the user, and the user will need to provide it in order to access the cluster. Now let's also create a, a volume for this new user. So we'll make him the owner of the volume. We set the replica to three because we don't want this user to lose his data, right? And the name of the volume, nervous. Okay, the volume was created. Let's also give him access to our replica one volume. Again, the tool to use is SXACL. The syntax in this case is grant per grant read write username nervous and the name of the cluster and the name of the volume R1. So now let's uh, reset the credential to the ones of the user. Uh, nervous. Uh, of course they scroll down so we can just uh, retrieve again the user key of uh, the access key of user nervous by using user get key nervous sx test. Here it is. So now we log in while well, we log in. We uh, set up authentication for user nervous with the usual sxinit command. We cut and paste the user key of user nervous. And there it is. Now we can list the volumes of the cluster. And you can, as you can see, we don't see the very important volume. We just see the nervous volume for which uh, I am the owner and uh, the R1 volume for which admin granted me the uh, authorization to access it, the privilege to enter it. So let's see what's inside replica one volume. Now let's try to upload this same file to my volume with dash v so that we can see what's going on. As you can see, no 
byte was transferred. Uh, there were five blocks in these files and all five blocks have been uh, deduplicated. This was just a quick demo of all the things that you could do with the sex client tools. We encourage you to do your best to find creative ways to use them and uh, let us know uh, how SX has helped you solve your storage problems by sending us a message on our uh, mailing list. Thank you.